So glad you're joining us tonight for a very special Atlanta Live. Pastor Javen here, Senior Pastor of Now Church, and I'm so glad to be back in Atlanta. Let me tell you, tonight we have some apostles, we have pastors, we have worship leaders, folks that are going to share with you how they dealt with and got through the pandemic. Not only that, what they are doing now, the creative ways of how their ministries are exploding how they're being creative and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ during this transition of getting from the pandemic back to the basic things in ministry. I want you to do me a huge favor. Please tweet, post, text, tell everybody, tune in now. Javen is on live, Atlanta Live, and there are some extraordinary recording artists, pastors, and teachers that are going to share the word of the Lord with you tonight. And I promise you, it's going to bless your life. If you need healing tonight, stick around. If you need breakthrough, if you need an answer from the Lord, I want you to stay tuned. It's going to bless your life. All right, we got to kick this thing off with some praise and worship. And I'm extremely excited about this recording artist. She is a singer, singer. Every time she sings, I'm telling you right now, the walls come down. The one and only Tiffany Boone is coming to you to sing now, Best Days. Would you make some noise for Tiffany Boone, who's a gospel recording artist? Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever you are, just clap your hands real good. You got to get out of that bed, get off that couch, and celebrate Jesus with us tonight. Hallelujah. It just says this.
that's what I'm talking about. Come on, make some noise. Great job, Tiffany. Singing behind her was Brandy Jackson, Brian Steele, and Maya Evans singing the best day of my life. This is the best day of your life. I'm Pastor Javen, Senior Pastor of the Now Church. You are watching Atlanta Live, and I want you, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and tell somebody, tune in now live, because there are some people that are going to speak a word that's going to literally change your life. And I'm going to start right here in Atlanta, Georgia. My brother and sister from another, as they say, they are gospel royalty, recording artists, best-selling uh, <laughs> singers and songwriters. Not only that, but they have family members that are superstars in the gospel industry. And most importantly, their most important role, besides being a parent, uh, they pastor a great church, Breathe Atlanta. I hope I said it right. <laughs> Come on, make some noise for Gerald and Tammy Haddon. <laughs> How y'all doing? Y'all know I'm notorious for this. We're good, though. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're great. Awesome. You, did it, you did it right. I did you it did right. It right. Yeah. Even, even oh. though we say ATL, but it's So it's still Breathe right. ATL. Yeah. All right, church, I apologize. This Amen. Okay. All right, so listen, let's get right into it. Mm -hmm. we, got a, we got a short window. Yes. We went through an incredibly tough and challenging year. I know that you guys kept on working not only through the pandemic, but greater things happened. Where did you get the mindset from to work harder, think bigger, grow stronger, as opposed to, oh my God, this is it? You want to go first? first? <laughs> Ladies first. Um, well, our, we live uh, in like the Buford area, like Mall of Georgia, and, and it's really... Um, coming up out there. So I was driving down the street one day, I, I might have been headed to the mall, and you see all of these um, new buildings being built, and they're building Top Golf, yeah. and they're building uh, new ramps off the expressway and all this stuff. And I was driving down the street, and God literally said to me, he said, builders build. Wow. And I was like, wow. okay, so what's that mean? And he was like, these people are not necessarily church people, but while everybody else is wondering what's happening next, they're still breaking ground. Absolutely. They're still building. Wow. They're still pursuing vision. Wow. And he was like, and if that's what those that don't know me are doing. Wow. Wow. How much more? What's the church going to do? Come on. I you know, it. and so in that moment, I decided, like, I'm not going to be afraid. Like, God, you're, you're in total control, but I'm going to keep doing what you've called us to do. Yeah. Gerald, you, or Pastor Gerald, you are a church plant. Your yes. church is how old now? Um, going on two years, June 30th. It'll be two years. What do you say to those that had just, because that's, that's very young uh, for a church to experience yeah. something like a pandemic. Yeah. We know that many churches ended up uh, having to close down. Thank God you guys did not. W what would you say was the keeping thing for you? What, 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 what didn't make you afraid and like, oh my God, we just started this. I just put my money into this. Yeah. You know, I just walked off my job, all that stuff, you know. Well, I wasn't afraid because I'm, um, I'm always encouraged anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm a faith walker. Yeah. So being a faith walker, it didn't scare me. It actually gave me time to sit back and reset Got and it. say, okay, how can we make sure when we come out of a pandemic, we can even be better? Wow. So then um, what we did was because we didn't own our own building, it actually was a blessing to us. So we were able to stop. We were able to reset. Going um, in our little hibernation, which is our basement, <laughs> pull out some cameras and figure out how we were going to do ministry differently. And then it was a time for me during the pandemic where people were saying, like, oh, my God, what are we going to do next? I even said, oh, my God, what are we going to do next? He actually said to me, do those things you've been saying you didn't have time to do. Come mm. on. So that's what I did in, my, in the reset. I said, okay, there were some, some things that I had in my mind, some things I wrote down I wanted to do. And during the pandemic, we started writing down these things. The things we wrote down, we started doing them. Yeah. Wow. So even when she talked about Builders Build and we was talking about building our church in Buford, she, God told her Buford, God didn't tell me Buford. He just told me the pastor. And so we got in a debate, an argument about it. We, we going back and forth. I said, well, Tammy, she said, God told me beautiful. I said, God told me the pastor. <laughs> so, so I said to her, I said, all right, Tammy, let's do this. And this is how I talked to God, straight up. We, I said, God, while we riding down the street one, one yeah. day, just got off the phone with our team. And they're like, where are we going to be? Are we going back in church? Yeah. Are we not? Oh, the pandemic. And I said, oh, God. So I said, just like this to God, I'm driving. I said, all right, God, you know how I roll. I said, I need you right now. I said, you told Tammy Buford. You told me the pastor. Wow. I said, so open the door for us. I said, I need to know by Wednesday. We were coming to Nashville to be with you. 
Wow. And it was on a Monday. To do that taping. To do the taping yep. in wow. Nashville. Wow. Monday, I said this to God. Tuesday, a friend called me and said, hey, man, it's this building right here Come on. in Buford. Come on. And I said, wait a minute. Now, this is, this is scary. That's how fast he moved. Yeah. And literally, that Tuesday, we went to see the building. I said, this is it. Yeah. This is it. And when we came back from Nashville, God just worked it out. It's so amazing. It was just dope how he did it. And it showed me that he can do, even in the middle of a pandemic, he still opens doors. Yeah, yeah. exceedingly abundantly. Yeah. So you're telling me God literally gave y'all a building in the, in the middle, middle, of, middle of, absolutely. of a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. When buildings were closed. Yeah. <laughs> gave yeah. us a building. So, so, all right, so let's talk about that for a second, because that had to go against the general right. yeah. thinking, because yeah. people, hey, folks are not meeting. You don't yeah. need a building. Save that yeah. money. Yeah, True. it definitely it went against what a lot of people were saying it went against what a lot of pastor friends were saying to us yeah. but I think this is this is um, times like this is when it's very important that you have a relationship with God and that you are familiar with the voice of God because so often we allow other people to speak into our lives and we Absolutely. take their voice as the authority mm -hmm. because you don't know what the voice of God sounds like Come but on. I don't believe that God is a trickster yeah. I don't believe he's into playing games yeah. and he called us the pastor and he knew the pandemic was coming yeah. and so we just trusted that and we're like all right so yep. building so let's go and I, I think that's it because God had really even prior to us pastoring just with the move to Atlanta God had been dealing with us in a way financially and all kind of things. So we would literally laugh like, okay, God, how, how are you going to do this this month? Like, it, he <laughs> how are you just, showing off this yeah, month? Yeah, he had yeah. just started yeah. getting so creative with how he was blessing us. Yeah. So we're just people yeah. that's like, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't have to know how it's going to happen. It's yeah. not my job to make it happen. You told me it's going to happen, and I know it's going to happen. Yeah. I know. I was telling people, yeah. you know, for I think those that did well during the pandemic were people that had already experienced the personal yeah. uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. You guys having yeah. worked with uh, Bishop Noah Jones for many yeah. years mm -hmm. in the city of Los Angeles, California, where, yeah. I, where it used to be my home. Yeah. Right, right, and, right. Uh, and, and then you guys picked up and left and did a huge faith move, by yeah. the way, and came to Atlanta and then launched uh, Breathe ATL. You got so, it right. So I, I got it right. Come on, David. <laughs> so, so it's just you had already saw the hand of God yeah. Yeah. moving supernaturally in your life. So the pandemic was, was I'm not going to say a cakewalk, but yeah. right. it was familiar. Right. Absolutely. And it, I'm sorry. I just we just trust God and and it's so weird when yeah. you have friends in ministry or, or you have people that you follow in ministry and when you're clearly hearing God say something and then you're hearing people say something that's contradictory. I wouldn't. And your friends say, I wouldn't. Yeah, I like, wouldn't. And God's saying, do, do. God is saying, do. And yeah. so I just bottom lined it at this. Um, you know, God does different things with different people. Like, Absolutely. maybe that's exactly what he's Absolutely. saying to you. Maybe he's telling you, church is done. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But that's not what he's saying. That's not what he's saying to us. Yeah. Yeah. I say, he says to you, stop. He tell me, go. Yeah. 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 You know? All right. So you guys got creative. I, I, and I love what y'all did. Y'all did church in the basement. Mm -hmm. You did concerts, yeah. all that kind yeah. of stuff. Phenomenal. All right. Now you are in the middle. You're transitioning. You you, you open your doors back, right? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. So let's talk about what you're doing now to transition yourselves back into live church. Um, well, we've what actually. What creative things? We've been live in the building since November. November? Mm -hmm. um, the first thing we did was like a big night of worship. And um, we did a lot of outreach, and um, we're under Pastor Ron Carpenter's fellowship. Okay. And so um, many people know that they've gone back to, or they've started a church again in Greenville. And so we go down there and help them. And so I want to say the first service we went to, mm -hmm. to see in the middle of a pandemic, you know. This was like in September, October. Yeah. To walk in a building and you see 2,000 people. People in the building. And the saints is worshiping, and I'm like... All right, the saints as well. It was crazy. It was crazy. I was in there with my mask on. Said, Jesus. So, but to but to see that yeah. there are people that still want to corporately worship, yeah, yeah. I think seeing that helped us say, you know what? Let's go. And everybody may not want to, and that's right. fine. Nor are we telling you that you are faithless yeah, right. if you don't want to. Everybody yeah. has their reasons. I like that. But for the people that want to come back or are ready to come back. We here. Put your so mask on. So did you do like the phase come. one rollout and all that phase two, or did you just open the doors? And we just opened the doors. doors, but what we did was let them know. Even when we post about it, we show them us sanitizing, us using our hand sanitizers, us wearing our masks. Checking temperature. And check, yeah. checking temperatures. We follow all the we CDC We don't have guidelines. all the chairs so, out yeah. and things yeah. like that, but it's, we're open. What are you preaching to people now? What are you telling them 
right now? What is God saying? What, where, where are we headed? Oh. What do we need to be expecting? Because I know when we were going through this, a lot of prophets were prophesying a lot of things. Oh. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people were predicting a lot of things that uh, did or did not happen politically and all that stuff. Uh -huh. um, and now it seems like um, people are starting to find some type of sure footing. What do you believe uh, God is saying now? And what are you preaching to your people as far as in how do you look, how do you think? You go first. How you need to um, Well, one of the things oh. that, I'm sorry, babe, we're, we're okay. preaching about um, that this is the year of the becoming. Absolutely. Um, I'm, bec I'm becoming, I'm moving into my next. But in order for that to happen, we're unlearning some things. Yes. And we believe that God yes. is transitioning out of what was into what he wants it to be. Yeah. Um, and I said, for, I believe for the church, COVID was, have you ever seen those movies where the grandmother would take up the old rug in the house and take it out on the, on the porch and beat, beat it, it out? <laughs> and <laughs> all the dust starts I mean, right. That's what God did with the church during COVID. Um, that's but hilarious. I, I really, I, I think that he just wanted, he pushed pause like a hard emergency yeah. stop yeah. Um, because we were starting to really look more like us than him. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. so I think what we're, tell, what we're telling our people, what we're preaching to our people, at least what I'm preaching and Gerald, you know, is that, um, is that God is transitioning you into what's next. Mm -hmm. And that may not look like what you think it's going to look like. It may not feel like what you think it should feel like. But if you trust the process, um, it's all about faith and, and not being afraid to yes. come out of what was. Because a lot of times we get stuck because it's comfortable. Yeah. We're afraid of what's next. Yeah. And s Sunday specifically, I preached... Um, it's time to come out of Absalom's house. Yeah. Wow. And we talked about how, you know, everything that happened to Tamar, but t her story ended in that house. She went in there, ran and hid, and nobody knew what happened. And like, okay, come on out. Like, yeah. Your story is <laughs> not over. It's time yeah. to come on out. And yeah. so that's yeah. just, that's where we're at. I'm yeah. sorry. She, no, and, oh, she, you said it best. Right, yeah, we just man, put, right? You see that? <laughs> but um, no, we just pushing people into their purpose. I yeah. knew that that's one of our jobs is to push people into their purpose. It's so many people that don't know what their purpose is. Mm -hmm. So um, we've, we've been preaching heaven and hell our entire Life. We, we didn't heard heaven and hell. So listen. now we're just trying to teach people how to live in the center, in the middle of it, uh, between heaven and hell. You know, so <laughs> listen, between don't, don't send me to hell. Don't send me to hell. I like how you yeah. said you're teaching people how to become. Yeah. yeah. When, when I say become, Pastor Joe, what does that mean to you? When you spiritually speaking, what, what is that? Well, I like start with me by becoming a pastor. Yeah. I had to become a pastor, which I was already a leader because I led music departments. I had a, a, a membership of 300 at Bishop Noel Jones Church. So I pastored them. And then when I came here, I was, I was over a music department here when I first got here, pastoring them. There were 70 people. I was pastoring them, and I knew God was doing it. So I had to become an actual leader. I had to, like, step forth and say, okay, God, it's what good. is it you want me to do? Yeah. What is it? He said, I want you to become a pastor. Yeah. I want you to help push people into their purpose. Yeah. And so I had to become that. And I'm still working on it. Yeah. I was going to say, because you still do music. Yeah. You still, you, you guys still sing. You oh, still okay. are very much involved. And I think that's something key. Real quick, we're just about out of time. But how that you are juggling, you didn't give up one thing to take on something else. No. Right, not it's, at it's, all. it's just balance. It's just balance. Like we, now we balance our days to, for example, I was working today with this artist, this amazing artist today. <laughs> um, up until I got, came here, I was working with this amazing artist today. But it's just balance. Tomorrow, I work on church. Friday, we work on us. Saturday, we work on us. Sunday, we work on God. You're becoming. Oh, we're becoming. Yeah. We're You're becoming. becoming. Yeah. Yeah. You're becoming. Yeah. Uh, take about a minute, look in that camera, and just pray over the people right quick before. Baby, we you're, you're the better prayer because, you know, <laughs> I, the, way really I, the way I pray, you know. <laughs> We'd have been done in five seconds, right? <laughs> right. Father God, in the yes, name God. of Jesus, God, we thank you uh, tonight for this opportunity to just share the goodness of yes, who you God. are. God, I ask that right now that you touch every listener right where they are. God, I ask that right now you meet every need. Do what only you can do. Do Jesus. what only you can do. God, we ask that you would encourage the hearts. God, we ask that you would um, encourage them in their mind and their emotions. Yep. God, heal the sick. God, we yes, ask God. that you would break every chain, loose every chain. Shackle, God, we ask right now that you would encourage that person that says, yeah, I hear you. God does it for everybody else, but I don't know if he's going to do it for me. God, I ask that tonight, that tonight yes, that Come you on. would show up for them show in a way that they know that it was nobody but you, God. And we would just forever give your name all praise, Hallelujah. glory, and honor in yes. Jesus' name. Jesus amen. Name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you guys for Thank stopping you. by. Uh, you can always see uh, Pastor Joel and Tammy at, Tammy at <laughs> Breathe ATL. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> at Breathe ATL right here in yeah. Atlanta, Georgia. Great music. And by the way, the artist he was, talk was talking about working with is me. Yeah. So we're working on some new oh, music. Oh, it was you? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got to keep going. All right, we're going all the way to Tampa. Coming to sing uh, Reckless Love, the one and only, this incredible art gospel artist. I love this young man. I think you're going to love him as well. Make some noise for Joan singing, Joan B singing Reckless Love. About a year's worth of a global pandemic, I stand here as a walking, talking, living testimony of God's reckless and unfailing love. And so I want to sing my testimony song over you guys tonight. And I just want to encourage your spirits that the Lord's love for you supersedes anything you could ever imagine. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. I don't deserve, still you give yourself away, and oh, the overwhelm, never ending, reckless love of God, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your reckless love, Jesus.
love of God. Great job. That's Jawan B. from Tampa, Florida. He is the worship leader at River Hills Church of God and is the founder of Nexus Internship. Great, great singer and songwriter. He'll be back to sing some more stuff. You are watching Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Pastor Javen, now Church Hollywood, Florida. By the way, if you ever in South Florida, down by Miami, Fort Lauderdale, y'all come hang out with us. I got to keep this show going. I'm so excited. You heard her open the show earlier, powerhouse singer, originally from Cordell, Georgia, the one and only Tiffany Boone. How you doing? I am. Yeah, I know we're awesome. going to <laughs> I'm awesome, thank you. We sanitize, I promise, okay, so we'll be, be all right. How you doing? I am awesome, thank you for asking. So glad you are here with us. You've been singing since you were 10 years old. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you sing like, did, did you, uh, first off, uh, put the camera on me right quick, real, real close. If you have never seen her in her element, you need to go to YouTube, <laughs> put in <laughs> Tiffany Boone's name, and just watch her kick off the shoes and do all. <laughs> were you doing that at 10 years old? Were you kicking like your little shoes off? You know off? what, I have to be honest, I was. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've always been really energetic, um, and there's, at the time, my immediate family has a total of four. Okay. And I think I was uh, really the only one that was just like, <laughs> my dad used to be like, oh, goodness. What's, what's going go? on? <laughs> Did you, is anybody else singing in your family? Yes. Um, my entire, my mom, my father, and my brother, they're all singers. Wow. So when you start singing, when do you know or when does everybody start recognizing uh, she has something special, this is something unique? Because, you know, when you're black and you're in church, everybody sings. True. And uh, it's funny that you say that. I think everyone identifies me by the tone of my voice. Yeah. I can go in Walmart sometime, and if I'm responding to someone, they'll hear my tone of voice, and they'll say, hey, aren't you the girl that yeah, I'm yeah. like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes if they see my face, I have to actually speak in order to be identified. So when they started, so you've always had what we call a contralto, that's contralto, right? Yes, sir. Like a contralto range. You've always been able to sing that low. Well, I started actually in Macon, Georgia. My first community choir was a choir called the Allen Family Choir. Okay. And I started as a soprano in that choir. Shut up. I had a baby. My daughter is now 11 years old. Okay. And after that, it I went. Just, <laughs> just shut down from there. <laughs> but the anointing stayed. Yes, thank God. I love it. Thank God. You, uh, years ago, you sung, or in the past, you sung with uh, Ricky Dillard. Yes, sir. Uh, how, how long, how many times, how long did you stay with him? I want to say maybe a little over a year. And that's what uh, the, the best day of my, that's where that song's from. Yes, sir. All right. And then uh, we catch you on the scene with uh, the one and only J.J. J. J. Harrison. Harrison. Yes, sir. You still singing with J.J.? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And now, not only that, but you are also uh, one of the premier worship leaders, yes. uh, worship ministers yes. over at New Birth under the leadership of... Uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Dr. Jamal <laughs> Bryant. Killing it. And yes. your co-worship leader is... It's Jonathan Nelson, my mentor. You mentored by Jonathan Nelson? I know. I'll be praying, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love you, Jonathan. <laughs> All right, Tiffany, uh, I saw you guys, I think, I, and I'm going to probably exaggerate, but I felt like I saw y'all during the pandemic singing on a beach, <laughs> singing in Walmart. I felt like y'all set up a <laughs> Am I getting yes. close? I felt like y'all did a, a worship set uh, at the lobby of the Ritz-Carlton. I felt like I saw We'll take it, because we were everywhere. <laughs> but Who it came was, up um, with all that stuff? It was actually um, a team of us. We have a, a service logistics team. Wow, say that real together. fast. <laughs> right. We come together. We literally prepare well over more than we actually execute. Wow. Um, wow. I mean, we spend days in a week just going over, over communicating what we're going to do. So you're doing that how far in advance? Um, 
we will start sometimes on a Sunday evening okay. after service wow. <laughs> because we always come together and critique. We try to find ways to, uh, you know, do better yeah. than we yeah. than we had done um, yeah. in the moment. But we uh, we had our last service. I want to say it was this time last year. Um, and let me say this: today marks officially uh, my two years of being at New Birth. New Birth. Yes. Here you go. There yes. you go. Congratulations. Yes, sir. But we had our last service in the sanctuary. And uh, there's plenty of spaces, uh, rooms at the church. However, um, our pastor is unapologetically, he loves to take risks. Yeah. And um, the motto from him is, no one's ever done this before in a pandemic. So let's just try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it, it allows us to be safe to create. Yeah. It allows us to say, hey, let's try this. And once again, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So we just went to different locations. We have a production team that yeah. goes with us. Um, uh, camera, sound, microphones, the band. Is, and, is uh, everybody excited to do this? Or do you have people going, I can't believe we got to do all this crazy stuff? Well, we were on the fence about it because of, <laughs> <laughs> because I, of I COVID. I wasn't expecting an honest <laughs> Oh, We were on the fence because you're going to, into an environment you don't know, you know, right, right, right. have they sanitized everything, right, right, right. you know, we kind of, <laughs> but I mean, once we get there, of course, we take God with us yeah. and we create a sanctuary wherever we go. Yeah. So it feels like new birth. It yeah. feels like our team. Yeah. And I mean, we, we enjoy. You could tell. Oh, we enjoy you it could tell. so much. A couple of things I heard you say was the preparation. Yes, and I sir. think that's something uh, pastors and worship leaders, p please pay attention. And by the way, you should go and check out some of their worship sets. Very creative, very phenomenal, done extremely well. But I like how you said preparation. And secondly, they enjoy yes, uh, what they do. And that definitely comes off. I want to ask you, um, when you get into uh, what to me uh, seems to be uh, a, just a passionate trance, of going, what are you going after when you are leading like that, when you're worshiping like that? You know what I'm talking about? Like yes, when you sir. really get in, what are you seeing? What's going on in your head? Um, the ad libs. I want to make sure that my lyrics are very realistic and transparent. Yeah. I always like to tell real people a real story. Yeah. And I feel like if I can give you what I've been through, yeah. we can relate. And, and my transparency will create a safe environment for them to open up. Yeah. So even as a worship leader, you know, you have people in the room, they don't, you know, there's, and you can't assume that everybody knows what to do in church. Yeah. yeah. So I like to be a teacher. Um, actually, Dr. E. Dewey Smith taught me as a worship leader, you don't have to sing. You teach them the song and you allow them to sing back to you. I'd say it for the people in the back. What is it? What, <laughs> for all worship leaders. Because <laughs> you know how you know I let worship for years. Wow. All right, say it again. All right, tell them. So as a worship leader, you don't necessarily all the time have to sing. You teach your congregation the song Come and on. they sing it back to you. Come on. Because you're leading them right. to worship. That's right. Wow. We can have a whole, we can have a whole show on worship just right now. <laughs> uh, tell a little bit about your story. Uh, uh, take about two minutes. What, what are some things that you want people to know that they may not know uh, behind the beauty, you know, behind well, all the glamour? thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, there was a time in my life, a season uh, prior to new birth, where I was actually living out of my car. Wow. Um, I went against the wisdom of my family and chose to make another decision, and that was the consequence. However, I didn't want to go back to my family. Of course, I was embarrassed. Yeah. I was ashamed. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want my life to be different from what my normal behavior patterns were. So I still posted pictures on social media. Wow. There was a basket of clothes in my back seat as well as my trunk. Wow. And I would park at Planet Fitness. I got a membership at Planet Fitness just to be able to take showers. Wow. And I would go uh, substitute at a high school in Macon, Georgia. Wow. Still leading worship. I traveled with JJ. I went to Africa during that time. Wow. Um, and that was my first time going. I was still traveling, taking engagements. All the while, my home was my car. Wow. And one night I said, Lord, this is not my life. I didn't grow up like this. My father's a bishop. Yeah. I, I don't know about this life. So I said, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to live. I don't want to spend another night in my car. Yeah. And as soon as I opened my mouth to say that, I got a phone call from someone that knows well of my family. They knew me from serving at churches. Mm -hmm. And they said, I have an apartment for you. It's a two bedroom, one bath. Wow. I said, thank you, Jesus. I literally got out of the car and started dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so with this apartment, it was, um, 
uh, technically known as a housing authority, but we know it as the projects. Yeah. But I kept it clean as if it was a mansion because I felt like this is what God blessed me with during this time. Ooh. And from there on, I traveled and, and, and even at the end of, I stayed in that apartment for a year. At the end of that year, yeah. Dr. Bryant reached out to me through uh, social media and asked me to come to Newburgh. I was gonna say, I heard somewhere that he just saw you and just yes, hired sir. you right on the spot. Yes, I didn't have an interview oh at all. Oh my God, oh my Favor God. Favor of God, I promise, <laughs> I promise. I'm so <laughs> mad our time is up. All right, so you gotta come back. We gotta talk some more <laughs> about this faith walk. That, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes when you see people and you see the anointing on them, I always say don't hate people's glory wow. until you know their story. That's right. And the anointing of God is definitely on your life, Tiffany. Yes, I, I'm a fan of yours, I've watched wow. you from I mean, this is our first time actually yes, meeting. Uh, I've watched you for many years on social media doing your thing, wow. and I'm so glad you were able to be a part of Thank this. And we're just excited me. for all the great things that are coming through you and all the great stuff that God's going to do through you, the yes, books, the yes, music, wow. the CDs, all that great stuff, because all that stuff is in you, and there's such a passionate anointing upon your life yes, sir. that people need to see, they need to hear. So glad you're with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Thank you for being a part. So excited, so excited. Well, church, uh, we, we got to keep it going. If you want to uh, find Tiffany Boone, you can follow her on social media and all the stuff that you see on the screen about her. But I promise you, you are going to be blessed by And, and she, you still travel, too. Yes, sir. And she still travels. So if you want to have her at your church, it would be a great guest to have. All right. I'm so glad uh, that Juwan is coming back to sing Escape. Would you make some noise for Juwan B as he sings Escape? Hallelujah. So much like our minister Tiffany Boone, I experienced homelessness and everything as well. And the Lord just began to minister to my heart in so many different ways and say, I'm overwhelming everything that's overwhelming you, every situation, everything. And he provided an escape for me. So that's where this song was written from. Just I will call upon the Lord, He will deliver. 
my soul takes heart And I breathe new life Good job, good job. He, Joan, you did everything I taught you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> listen, this is a uh, young artist that I want you guys to support, and he's uh, up and coming. He's uh, based out of Tampa, Florida, but uh, if you're looking for someone fresh to come and lead worship uh, for your ministry, or you need an artist to do something uh, for one of your special programs for your youth and whatnot, you look up Jawan B., and uh, be, um, I promise you, he'll bless your life. All right, we got to come back to Atlanta, Georgia. This, this guy is an apostle, he's a pastor, he's a author, and he is a young man that I have uh, come to know through uh, another great friend of ours, uh, Bishop Terrell Fletcher out of yeah. San Diego, California. Had him on the last time with me. He so blessed, uh, blessed me and blessed you. I had to have him back. Would you make some noise for the one and only Apostle Brian Meadow? How you what doing, sir? Do? I, don't, I, I always don't know whether to shake or to... <laughs> it's all right, man. We're embracing. We're exactly. Embracing. How you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm doing awesome. It's a very, a very exciting time. Yeah. God is doing so many amazing things. God is faithful and continues to prove his faithfulness. So I'm excited. Yeah. How is Embassy International <laughs> Church? <laughs> My we church. Because last time I said that, last time when I went to say the name of his church, uh, I said something else. Yeah, I, I yeah. Just, I just, I'm notorious for messing I up. I didn't know what you was talking I about. I know, it was crazy. But, but you played it, you did good. We did good, we did, did good. good. How's no, it The church is doing absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. You know, uh, we've tried Are to navigate. Are y'all back in worship? We're back in worship, okay. we're back in the sanctuary. Uh, we're still doing a limited seating. You okay. still gotta register, whether it's on site or yeah. online. Uh, people are still wearing masks, but yeah. people are excited to be back. Yeah. Uh, they're expectant, their faith is engaged, and mm -hmm. um, people were really ready, not just to come back, but you know, when we first started to come back, we kind of created this small studio audience. Mm -hmm. Because even though we were back, we were more so still playing toward the camera. We were play right. playing toward the people that were online. And so people say, look, I'm tired of coming back and just you know, being a second thought. I, I don't want to just be here and be behind some cameras. I want to be here and I want to be engaged. So uh, not only are we back, we're back on the main stage. Nice. We've increased the capacity. So people are really excited and yeah. it's going really, really good. When did you open up? Well, we started. Well, when did you to, start rolling out? Yeah, we started to roll out uh, just a small plan. Started to have a small studio audience probably back last year around October. Okay. October, oh, wow. November. We started to allow uh, probably about 50 people in. You still okay. had to register online. Okay. And then at the beginning of the year, we opened it up a little bit more as we saw the demand, we okay. saw the hunger. People were ready to get back into the presence of God. Yeah. And as pastors, we want to facilitate. Yeah. That. How? How? What? Did, what was your mindset? What did you feel? Uh, I, I don't know when we shot our show, but. Uh, um, what is your thought pattern? Uh, I'm taking that's going going back to last year right. during the pandemic. You're thinking right. what? This is Armageddon. This is the end. <laughs> the second coming of Christ. Right. What's going on in your mind? What are you well, thinking you know, at that time? It's interesting because when the pandemic first happened and they shut down churches, when the shutdown was first announced, I did a series because now I'm not preaching to an audience. We're preaching online to the world. Uh, to the world. Yeah. And I did a series called The End Times. Yeah. Because I thought that during this time, so many perverse or so many false ideologies of eschatology was beginning to emerge, right? Now, first off, what is the eschatology? <laughs> eschatology is the study of the end times. Come on. How things are going to culminate, how things are going to end. And so many people thought that this was the end. This was the end of my life, the end of my marriage, the end of my church, the end of my business. And so I wanted to deal with that. How does God end a thing? He is the beginning, Come but on. he's also the, the end. end. Mm -hmm. So God does finish a thing. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. Yeah. And so God is not just a finisher, but he's an awesome finisher. And so yeah. if he's going to bring something to a close, if he's going to complete a thing, he's going to do it in amazing fashion. So I knew that the pandemic was not the end. It may have been the end of an era. Yeah. It may have been the end of a dispensation. It may have been the end of how we know church or what we've done in church to this point. But I don't think that it is God's desire to end a thing without beginning something new. Wow. And so even though he was ending it, we were expecting, we were excited that whatever he was about to begin is going to be better than what he ended. Wow. Yeah, whatever we he's about to end is going to be better. It's going to be better 
than when he ended it. You you get into uh, online services, or right. were you already on online services? Well, of course, we were already online, and that's the funny thing, Javen, it's so funny because when the pandemic happened, everybody started talking about, now it's time for digital church, it's time for us to go online, and I'm thinking, like, We've been if you ain't been online in the last 10 years, you're already outdated, antiquated, it's already over for you, so this was not... <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> I'm like, this is not the time to be playing catch-up, you know Yeah, I, mean? I, heard, I, heard, I heard a church uh, having praise and worship on a conference call, because they didn't have the... Help us. Yeah, we yeah. Need, we need help. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, you'll be surprised how many people use Zoom on Sunday morning. Wow. How many people use Skype on Sunday morning because they were not prepared yeah. for this digital deluge. But yeah. when the pandemic first happened, uh, we were already online, but it took our online ministry to the next level. Yeah. We understood that missions and creative ministry had merged. Yeah. No longer was the missions field going to Africa, going to Asia. The missions field was every single Sunday morning when we turned that camera on and we were speaking to the entire world. Yeah. So now we even told our church, missions and media are one in the same. When you're giving to missions, we buy new cameras because we need some new cameras. We need <laughs> well, some Well, that new makes sense because yeah, mission is, is, I love that. Missions and media, it's, this, it's, it's one the thing. same. You, are, I, you have a unique uh, uh, combination of, of resume, similar to mine, in the sense mm. that you have uh, uh, drama, right. you know, not, not drama. <laughs> uh, not scandals. <laughs> not drama. Uh, we're talking uh, movies and, right. and all that kind of stuff. And, and so talk a little bit about, because sometimes, again, people see the, uh, the title pastor or right. apostle or whatever, and they just think, you know, w one box. But God has used you in, in different lanes. Talk about a couple of those lanes right. right quick. When I was about four or five, I started doing martial arts. My yeah. parents put me in martial arts. But of course, the dominant medium for martial arts in the U.S. is martial arts movies. Yeah. So that took me into movies. Yeah. I started looking at fight scenes, action movies. That got me into film and video. And so when I went to college, I went to Georgia State University for film and video. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting born again by visitation from the Lord. And so all of my attention started to kind of pivot towards ministry. Mm -hmm. And I started to kind of put the camera down. When I first got born again, I went into a church. They didn't have a media ministry. So I jumped behind the camera. I created the audiovisual ministry. For four years, I stood behind the camera and I was watching my pastor, yeah. not knowing that God was using my discipline to show me my destiny. Come on. Right? Even though I loved film, he was mm -hmm. actually showing me my future. And wow. so I ended up putting the camera down. I became a preacher. I started preaching, started traveling, all of that. But I didn't know that that passion for filmmaking yeah. was still in me. Yeah. And so during the pandemic, I couldn't preach every day. I couldn't <laughs> preach as much as I was preaching, you know. Right. And all of my preaching was integrated with film and video now because I was preaching to a camera. Yeah. So all of a sudden, that filmmaker in me started to wake up and started wow. to wow. activate wow. again. And wow. I found my passion. I found yeah. a love for filmmaking again. So yeah. during this pandemic, I've actually, you know, kind of kind of resurrected resurrected a hobby, resurrected yeah. Uh, yeah. a passion, resurrected a discipline and an art form, which yeah. is filmmaking. And so I actually, this past uh, weekend, I actually directed my very first film. And Hello. so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're in the editing process, post-production, but it's going to be coming out soon. And Love I can't it. wait for everybody to see it. Love it. I feel like what I just heard you say was that, you know, just because God adds a one thing, that doesn't right. mean he's saying no to another thing. Not at thing. all. Not at all. See, what, I, what I've learned as an artist, as uh, a gift, as anybody that, you know, you, you grow up and you have all of these aspirations. Yeah. You grow up and you know what you want to do, yeah. but ga God has his own plan. And yeah. so I've learned is that when you get your Isaac, God is going to always ask for your Isaac back. Yeah. So whether it's you, you want to be an entrepreneur, whether you want to be married, whether you want children, whatever it is you desire, when God gives it to you, he's going to then test your loyalty, to, uh, your loyalty uh -huh. to the thing that he gave you. Because he never wants the blessing to replace him. So Ooh. even when God gives you Isaac, he's then going to ask for Isaac back. And that's what God did to me. He gave me a passion for filmmaking. But once I got born again, it was like, okay, are you going to do ministry yeah. or are you going to do your hobby? Yeah. But I didn't know that putting down my hobby, right? Planting my hobby, killing my hobby, putting my Isaac on the altar, God had a greater plan. Even if I, if I killed it right now, God was going to raise it up in the future. Love it. And that's what I believe for every artist, for everyone that's an actor, a model, for everyone that's called to the arts, and you're trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to do ministry and do what I love to do? God says, if you sacrifice what you love to do now and do what I called you to do, then I'll bring back what you love to do in the future. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I always try to tell people at the end of the day, God has to be first. He's got to be first. If you can understand that amidst all your talents, all your gifts, yes. then the rest will work itself out. I think sometimes we hustle so much. We hustle so much. And the kingdom of God is not a system of hustle. 
Hold on for the people <laughs> for the people in the back. <laughs> Please say that again. We operate in two different world systems. The system of the world works by hustle. The scripture says not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, spirit says the Lord. Yeah. The scripture says it's the zeal of the Lord that shall perform this. Yeah. Paul said the Corinthian church, they had zeal, but not according to knowledge. You don't have zeal and then try to work it in your own strength. You have to be led by the spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 says that those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons, sons of, of God. God. Yes, sir. That's why I had to have you come back so you can finish all of this <laughs> knowledge. If that's not enough, I have several books here. Let's go through them right quick. All right, yeah. I have Dirty Knees and Green Thumbs, a guy to planning the extraordinary and seeing the impossible grow. That was my Talk first book this. I ever wrote. And that book is for church planters, for senior pastors, for leaders that are building churches, planting churches. That talks about everything from the soil, the city, the atmosphere, the leaders, everything. Because you started your church. We started our church from the ground up, yes. All right, 40 days of prophetic mentorship, the journey, inspiration, meditation, activation, step up now. Right. You can couple this with your uh, fasting. You can couple this with your consecration journey. Every single day is going to give you a devotional. It's going to give you an activation. It's going to give you an exercise. It's going to give you inspiration. And it's going to introduce a new theological concept every single day. I was going to say, now you know you, you done uh, uh, messed up some of these religious folks because you got meditation on here. Yeah. Yeah. We do talk about meditation. Yes. Yeah, That's so what the Lord said to Joshua. He said, meditate on the word uh -huh. both day and day. At night, you got to meditate. So, 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 uh, real quick, uh, we got to. Uh, these got shows so be going so fast. All right, so uh, meditation. Yeah, meditation. Make the case for the Christian meditation out there. Meditation is the process of taking a word, a thought, or a feeling from your mind to your heart. Meditation, the Hebrew word, means to murmur. It's what you're silently ah. saying to yourself all the time. Your inner conversation is actually meditation. Your inner conversation becomes the womb for your future. Whatever you say is going to be what you walk into. All right, how to study the Bible by Brian Meadows. 100%. We deal with I like all that. the I laws of hermeneutics and teach you how to walk through the Bible and get the most out of your Bible. So is that like for somebody that wants to uh, preach or start preaching? No, that's for anybody that wants to go a little bit deeper into the Word of God. Not just for preachers and teachers, but for any person, laity, believers, anybody. I like how it's, it's, it's outlined with the charts and stuff like yes, that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We try to make it as visual make as Make it possible. easy. Yeah. All right, breathe. Uh, hey, listen, uh, Pastor Gerald, your ch <laughs> church. <laughs> <laughs> that is the <laughs> new partner's <laughs> orientation guide for Breathe Atlanta. That's, that's <laughs> yes. Breathe, of course, uh, in meditation and reflection. We just did an e-course on meditation and reflection. Meditation is how you take a word of thought or a feeling from your mind to your heart, but reflection is how you take a word of thought or a feeling from your heart to your mind. At the end of the day, you have processed so much stimuli. At the end of the day, you've had so many encounters. You want to sit down, take a moment, and reflect. He got so many books. School of Prophecy, the Prophetic Science. Yeah, Prophetic Science. Session if one. You're a prophet, an intercessor, or you just have a whole bunch of dreams and visions and want to wonder or want to find out how do you interpret them, that's the book for you. A Practical Guide to Spiritual Warfare. I, well, that, that looks interesting. The that's Practicum. Really the Practicum. The Practicum. We want to make spiritual warfare practical. Sometimes it's depression, sometimes it's demonic, and we want to give you the uh, tools to discern. Wow, which, which one is which? Which one is which, yeah. Ooh, that's our time, uh, Apostle. Listen, do me a favor. I want you to look into the camera. Just take about a minute, and I want you to speak a prophetic word yes, sir. to those out there. Now, listen to what I'm going to ask you to do. I want you to speak to leaders. In we have a lot of leaders that are discouraged right now, so I want you to speak to them first, and then I want you to speak to the body. 100%. You just went through one of the most difficult seasons of ministry you will ever have to encounter, yeah. and you made it. You're on the other side of it. That means that there was something in you that still needs to come out. God has something on you that still needs to be seen. And so I want you to understand many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. What you just went through was pulling the best out of you. And so if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, entrepreneur, if you're a creative and you're wondering, how is my business going to survive? How is my mentality, my mind, my sanity going to survive? Hear me. Trust not in your own way. Trust not in your own gift but lean on God. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for Thank coming so much, and being a part of. If you're ever in the Atlanta area, go by Embassy Church, Church. Embassy International, and I promise you will be blessed. Listen, I encourage you to always know, no matter what you're going through, that he which has begun a good work and you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are all completed works. God does nothing incomplete. So trust me when I tell you, it's already done. All you got to do is just keep walking it, walking it out and you will see it come to pass. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and being part of this program.